It's IBC 2023. We're on the Atelier stand. I'm joined by Andy. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? Good morning. Thank you very much. I'm doing very well. So for people watching this that may not have come across Atelier before, give us a quick overview of your solutions and what you offer and your differentiators as well. Sure, absolutely. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you this morning. Um, Atelier is a cloud native SaaS solution, which uh, we're a software platform focused very much on enabling the next generation of modern media supply chain for content companies uh, of all types. So okay. uh, what does that mean? It really means uh, a platform which can facilitate the movement and the processing and the control and visibility of content as it moves from one place to another within a media organization. Typically, uh, the, the kind of things that need to happen are the creation of multiple versions for different parts of the world yep. for distribution. Um, and, and through that, that process of, 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 pro of getting the content from A to B, uh, some of the things that we do that are very unique include deduplicating it so that we don't right. end up having to store all those versions, which when you move to the cloud can be very impactful um, okay. in terms of total total storage costs. So right. I can cover a bit more on that as well. Yeah, and how are you doing things differently to other people? So I think one of the things that we have to be very conscious of is that uh, moving to the cloud is not a straightforward journey. It's, mm. a, it's, an, it's, it's something which many companies need help on, and we've really focused the product on, on delivering the key features which facilitate a move from a more on-premises, yeah, yeah. on-premise storage-based world into a cloud world. Yeah. So we've got a big focus on using the system for disaster recovery solutions, for example, yeah. okay. that we're introducing at the show. That's an area which lots of our customers really zero in on as the first uh, baby steps, if you like, towards mm. adoption of the cloud. So we can actually have a cloud supply chain which sits across the existing on-premise storage infrastructure yep. and gradually brings in content into the cloud to act as a disaster recovery for premium content, for example, yeah. as an alternative to building a fully duplicated geo-redundant facility. Yeah, yeah. And that can be a really straightforward way of adopting the cloud um, and, and getting the operations teams and the uh, technical uh, IT people in the media company used to the different ways of working that that entails. Yeah. I like how you call it a journey because it, it's it's not a simple switch, is it? It, it is a absolutely not. And I think the you know, we, we, whilst we are very focused on creating a productized platform that delivers mm. real value quickly, we're very conscious that we're part of that journey and that change process. Yeah, and we're and we're very keen on making sure we we, we build into the product uh, features which um, which facilitate that learning process for people who have to go through that journey with us. Yeah. So we're in Amsterdam, IBC. Mm. What are you um, talking to people about this year at the show? A couple of key things. So we are very much, I mentioned disaster recovery as being a prime application area. We have yep. a, a major European broadcaster who's adopted the platform this year, not yet nameable, but uh, mm -hmm. hopefully soon, who's now using us for their disaster recovery platform. Um, we're talking very much about one of our key features, which is uh, AI driven frame DNA capability. Okay. Um, and to talk a little bit more about that, um, if you imagine the amount of content that many uh, media companies have on their existing storage infrastructures, mm -hmm. that can be a vast amount. Um, and it's just not feasible really to say that every single title is going to now be moved mm. into the cloud. That's, yeah. that's not something that's generally speaking on, on anybody's project list. So as we move the content up into the cloud, um, two things are really important. Number one is to identify which content is key that, is the, that you want to prioritize in your cloud-based supply chain. But the other is once you start moving those titles up, is to really focus on ensuring that you're optimizing what is being stored. So okay. our frame DNA feature is our capability which allows the comparison of different versions of the same title. Mm -hmm. uh, and through that process, we can pick out all the bits of the content that, that are the same, all the bits yeah. that are different. Um, and then what we do is we build a composition playlist which tracks which pieces of content are part of which version for downward packaging right, and okay. delivery. Yeah, yeah. And through that process, we can actually deliver, in some cases, savings of up to 70 or even 75%. Mm. I've actually seen higher, but uh, in isolated cases, but some pretty astonishing savings mm. um, compared to every single version being duplicated. Right. You know, if someone's got 50 versions of a title, um, you really don't want to store all of those end no, to end. No. So, so yeah, some really significant savings. Um, and that's a feature which we can deploy and show real savings quickly. Like within a month or two of deployment, we can actually start to demonstrate this is how much you've saved. Yeah, um, yeah. And when CFOs are getting that kind of report, they tend to be quite happy about it. Absolutely. So everybody's, well, not everybody, but most people are trying to do more with less. Mm -hmm. Broadcasters and content creators are trying to increase efficiency. Um, so how are you helping them optimize their operations? 
So I think one of the key things to understand is that it's it's very easy to, to start a hugely complex project in this space. You know, you can you can spend a lot of time uh, analyzing all of your existing systems, mapping mm. the processes, getting a huge sort of almost system integration level of engagement around it and spending a lot of money. Yeah. So in the Atelier Connect product, we've really focused on delivering the key features that will deliver value fastest. And so uh, one of the aspects of that that's really important is a really compelling user interface that operations teams can intuitively understand and use, which doesn't require a lot of um, mm. train, a, a huge amount of training and upskilling. Clearly, there are there is a phase of that, but it's something that can be uh, in place and operational and delivering value very quickly to deliver the key capabilities such as frame DNA, such as title management, such as mm. flexible hierarchies, because everyone's yeah, got yeah. a different hierarchy that uh, is represented in their MAMs today. Um, and all of that is configurable within the UI so that you don't have to go through almost a coding and IT project phase beforehand. Mm. You, can, you can configure that in the user interface, get your hierarchy set up, get your get your content being uh, addressed more, um, by the system in order to bring it from an inventory perspective into that cloud supply chain very quickly um, and, and show that value and show that saving uh, as, as fast as possible. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about the cloud adoption challenges that you're seeing and how Atelier is providing solutions for those? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, what one key thing, it's I cover the region, which is Europe, Middle East and Africa. And of course, mm. that's uh, uh, it's not one region, clearly. Uh, it's many, many different regions. And, and yeah. across that region, uh, there's a very different rate of adoption of cloud yeah. technology. And so why is that? Well, number one, it comes down to where the cloud providers themselves have put infrastructure and put their mm. uh, put their own data centers and regions. OK, so we are an AWS partner. Um, when AWS opens up a new region, that really facilitates moving into the cloud for operators in that region. Clearly, yeah. it's almost self-evident, but um, it's much harder to adopt the cloud if you don't have local, especially in the media space where a lot of data is being transferred. Mm. If you don't have a local region, then that can be an impediment to adoption. So we very much track uh, AWS as they open new regions. And so the Middle East, for example, is now opening up with the Dubai region, and that's a, a okay. key differentiator. And of course, they've got localized services and capabilities to actually then support, support customers down there as well. So that's one key one. Um, if you sort of take away whether AWS is there or not, then of course, moving to the cloud has a learning curve. So, yeah. so that it's a very different operational model. Companies have to invest to some degree in their in their team's uh, skills to be able to make best use of the cloud. Um, and we're part of that journey as well. So we have some models and templates and recipes which can facilitate that adoption okay. and make it as seamless as possible. Okay. So who are some of your customers and, and, they, and how are they benefiting from what you're offering them? Sure. So um, if I just mentioned a couple in Europe, we're working very closely with uh, with Viaplay up in, uh, okay. up, in Scan up in Stockholm in Scandinavian region. So uh, they've been a, a customer of ours for, for quite some time now. Um, we have a number of other broadcaster customers coming on uh, within the region quite soon, uh, and as well as now telco customers as well. Mm. So it's quite nice to see that uh, our product is applicable not just to uh, the media and entertainment end of the industry, but also telco and cable operators who have TV platforms and yeah, need yeah. to organize their content too. Uh, in the US, a key customer of ours is uh, Lionsgate. So uh, we, we, we talk a lot about Lionsgate. They're perhaps the customer who is leveraging our platform in, in the most areas of their business. Um, one of the key benefits that Lionsgate is seeing is around time to market. And this is perhaps the other key area where from a business benefit perspective, we really help companies to, to, to make a step forward. So in Lionsgate's case, their existing on-premise infrastructure had a certain time to market. If their teams went out and, and licensed mm. and syndicated content to a new customer in a different part of the world, it was taking them quite a long time to actually get that content ready, processed, yeah, and yeah. through their supply chain. Um, and they're seeing benefits now of uh, at least 60% in terms of the wow. reduction in time needed uh, with the deployment of Atelier Connect to get that content out of where it is, processed, yeah, yeah. packaged, uh, compliance completed, sub subtitles ready, metadata brought in, packaged yeah, and ready yeah. to deliver. Yeah, that leads nicely into uh, the next question really because um, sustainability is a big topic here at IBC quite rightly. Mm -hmm. How, and you almost alluded to it there, how are your solutions um, approaching those sustainability goals? Yeah, well clearly the sustainability question is top of mind for many, many different organizations. Mm. It's a part of the corporate strategy for many, for many mm. media companies in terms of B Corp compliance and the yeah. various G strategies and so on. Um, well, number one, the cloud in and of itself uh, is, a, is a very important part of that. So um, just if you just look at AWS as a platform, if you even, um, first of all, before talking about Atelier, if you're, if you're on an AWS infrastructure for a workflow, 
you will get a huge amount of insight into the carbon footprint of the workflows that, that are on there. You know, Amazon's done a great job, AWS have done a great job of building in some really nice dashboards, which give you a lot of uh, ESG related compliance information about yeah. your compute and about your storage and what you're spending and what it's costing. So, so first of all, uh, all of those features are available. So when you, when you deploy an Atelier Connect solution, uh, or any Atelier solution, in fact, on AWS, all of that underlying AWS reporting is, is there and available to you. And it's very easy to then demonstrate what the carbon footprint is, for example, yeah, yeah. of the workflow. Um, and, and just purely from an efficiency standpoint, um, one of the things that you realize when you move to the cloud is that overall, the, the usage of the infrastructure that your workflows are running on is much higher. So, right. so that the servers are better utilized, the, uh, that there is less sitting idle happening across mm. the entire IT footprint compared to an on-premise solution. Yeah. Um, peaks of demand can be handled much more readily without having to over-provision an on-premise data system. So all of that has a carbon footprint and a, and a general environmental footprint benefit as well. So, so the cloud has a lot of tools built in, a lot of uh, principles of utilization which really facilitates that journey to a more sustainable media supply chain yeah and your tagline is media made easy so you're making Absolutely. it very easy for people yes and i think that's a really you know we, we we sort of live and breathe that that's something that guides our product teams uh, mm. decisions about which features to build into yeah. the product uh, we very much want to make sure that we're not uh, spinning the wheels on complicated projects mm. like i said that we've got the right features that facilitate adoption as fast as possible and that's something that we'll continue to push and to, to to listen to our customers as well yeah. and make sure that uh, yeah, we're not just saying it, that we're also delivering on that as well. Absolutely. Andy, thank you very much indeed. People not at the show, um, where can they find out more information? Sure. So uh, feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm there and I'm uh, fairly fairly visible on there. So you can find me hopefully fairly straightforwardly. But of course, go to www.atelier.com um, and you can get a, a full uh, rundown on all of our solutions and what we're up to. Brilliant. Andy, thank you very much indeed. Do check out the website for all the solutions Atelier can offer. And for everything else we've been doing at IBC, check that out at kitplus.com.